acha so i'll start my uh, uh, class today and i will as as uh, mentioned before i will be talking about digestive system in fishes so hope this is visible yes yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. so we will talk about digestive system in fishes so uh, there is a story about jona and the uh, whale they call it instead of the whale it's a big fish so in the bible there is a story so jona was a prophet sent by god uh, to uh, attack a city in the ancient assyrian civilization called nineveh now in nineveh uh they were not uh, they were non believers of particular god called yahweh so uh, that prophet uh, was sent to nineveh to change the minds of people so his uh, function was to change the mind of people and destroy uh, nineveh so that was his uh, essential uh, mission but uh, 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 going on going to nineveh the uh, he uh, became frightened and he was reluctant in uh, destroying the city so what he did he traveled back in the sea so god became very angry and caused a lot of disturbance uh, storms in the sea and their ship was about to drown and then uh, they realized that this storm was not a no normal one so uh, it was then known that uh, if all the sailors threw uh, jona into the sea then the storm will calm and uh, everything will be normal so the sailors initially they were reluctant to throw him overboard but then later the storm was so much that they had to eventually throw him in the sea and the weather became normal and uh, uh, the uh, the ship the, it sailed away so jona was on the water and uh, then he was saved a big fish ate him and he was in the stomach of the big fish then inside the stomach of the big fish jona prayed to god and asked for forgiveness they asked for forgiveness that uh, i will go to nineveh and destroy the city or change the minds of the people and so the big fish what it did was it went to uh, went to the land and then vomited uh, jona out and then jona again went to nineveh although he was reluctant he uh, changed the minds of people so this was the story so inside the stomach of the big fish that means you are going directly inside the digestive system of the fish and uh, uh, there uh, one thing for sure you don't get big ideas inside the stomach of the fish because uh, basically you will be digested out over there jona got a idea to ask god for forgiveness and he was saved from the uh, from the sea by this uh, by staying in the stomach of this big fish now let us look at the digestive system of a fish in general you have a mouth a terminal mouth mouth leads to a pharynx and then there are gills over here and uh, this 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 structure is the pharynx and on top you can see these little structures red structures called gills and they have got a uh, connected to the heart also they have got a, a good connection now this pharynx leads to a thin tube known as esophagus and that leads to a stomach the st and there are uh, organs known as uh, liver and gall bladder present which go to the stomach and then that leads to the intestine the intestine it, it ends into the anus so basically you have certain glands like liver and a place where the uh, bile is uh, stored that is the gall bladder and this is the essential digestive system of a fish 
Now you have to study a comparative account of the digestive system in different groups of uh, classes of fish. So the prim most primitive of them are the cyclostome or the lamprey and hagfishes. So they are the lamprey and the hagfishes. So uh, this is how the digestive system looks like. The tube, esophagus comes, intestine, and it has got a spiral curtain partition, and it ends in the anus. This is the digestive system. So behind the pharynx is a simple tube, just a simple tube. The first portion is called the esophagus. Although it is not greatly different in its external appearance from the intestine which follows, there is a difference. Inside the intestine is found a modified fold of the intestining lining called a tiflosole or a spiral valve. So a spiral valve curtain is present. It forms a long curtain-like partition which is suspended into the lumen of the intestine through most of its length. Most of the length of the intestine, it is just uh, uh, suspended uh, throughout like a curtain. This spiral valve of tiflosome is present. This long tiflosome attach uh, attachment to the intestine wall is mid-dorsal at the anterior end and then spiral size slightly as it progresses towards the pro posterior end. So you can see it's on the top anterior end and then thrown as a spiral okay, it comes back to the posterior end towards the end. The function of a spiral valve is that they take, uh, if they take some bones and all, these spiral valves have got, uh, especially it's important in sharks, they crush the bones into smaller fragments. This is how the digestive system of lamprey looks like. Next, you have, have a look at the shark's alimentary canal. There is a bit of a change. It's not like a simple tube. You, a fat esophagus, it leads to a stomach that leads to an intestine. And the intestine is with full of spiral valves. They, they act like spiral rings, like a ring it is present. And there is a presence of a rectal gland and a cloaca. Cloaca, it, it exists, exists from, exits, waste materials exit from cloaca. So you can see there is the most important characteristic is intestine with spiral valve. It is for crushing bones. So sharks which belong to the uh, archondrichthians, uh, that is cartilaginous fishes, polypterids, sarcopterygians, sturgeons, paddlefish, bowfins and guards, the intestine retains the spiral partition. So this spi uh, spiral partition is present. So we are going to a more advanced uh, a more advanced uh, um, elementary canal, a digestive canal, that is the shark's elementary canal. So its spiral is more pronounced in these fish. The spiral partition is more pronounced than in lamprey. A stomach between the esophagus and the intestine is present. This is the esophagus and there is a stomach. The stomach is not very much uh, prom prominent is present and this is the intestine which comes present complete with ca cardiac and pyloric regions cardiac region is the below part where the heart is and the pyloric region which leads to the intestine an enlarged lumen usually a j shaped uh, stomach body so this forms a j shape you can see this like a j shape this forms a J-shape. The rectal glands seen in chondrichthians help to remove salt uh, from the body tissues. So this rectal gland is useful for removing salt since they live in the sea. And they are, the sea water comes, these rectal uh, glands, they remove the salt, excess salt. Intestine, urinary ducts and reproductive passages terminate at a common space known as uh, cloaca. So urinary ducts, reproductive passages, that is uh, where the sperm and eggs uh, come out, terminate at a common space known as cloaca. So this is what happens in chondrichthians. Now let us go to a, a bony fish of the tilius digestive system. It varies. So the, they don't have the spiral valve modification of the intestine. 
instead of that they have a lengthen system which coils about within the body cavity so the intestine uh, forms a coil inside the body cavity it's coiled it's long and it's coiled many tilios have a pyloric cica which are small diverticuli of the intestine located just posterior to the pyloric sphincter so the esophagus leads to this stomach that leads to the pyloric stomach and they have got some pyloric uh, cica the pyloric sphere sphincter is uh, uh, behind this is the pyloric stomach over here and the pyloric sphincter is over here and after that there is this pyloric cica and the intestine is coiled it also ends in the cloaca so this is the tilios digestive system now, now uh, let us uh, again go so the digestive system basically you see it includes elementary canal associate and its associated glands the elementary canal or gut shows four distinct regions the ingressive zone the progressive zone the degressive zone and the egressive zone so you have the uh, ingressive zone the mouth then the progressive zone comes the uh, esophagus stomach uh, intestine comes then degressive zone it ends into the near the anus and then you have the rectum from where where the waste is removed so if you look at the uh, the mouth mouth is the anterior of the first part is the anterior opening you can see this is the mouth of fishes mouth is the anterior opening of the alimentary canal most fish mouth fall into three general types you have the superior mouth oporer dike thake terminal mouth ei khaner dike majkhane thake inferior or subterminal mouth the mouth is on the below ektu nicher dike thake so is this is a terminal mouth this is a subterminal mouth ekto nicher dike thake this is a inferior mouth and ekhane dekhbe mouth ta oporer dike and that is a superior mouth so this is a see this fish the mouth is on the superior side and this is the subterminal mouth the mouth is below and terminal mouth ekdom majha maji rui macher moton and in these fish you can see that the mouth is below then you have the teeth teeth are generally hollow cones of dentine containing the pulp cavities teeth are generally hollow cones of dentine dentine is a very hard material and pulp cavities is there is a cavity inside which contains the pulp the nerve endings blood vessels they go over there in uh, cyprinoids that is in cypress fishes in uh, cyprinoids carps which have got pharyngeal teeth instead of normal teeth which are there adapted for crushing and grinding the prey so golar moddhe angul dhukiye dekhle you can find that you'll find uh, uh, some pharyngeal teeth that is from the made from the gill records these pharyngeal these okay sorry for the disturbance so they have the uh, teeth so you can see the pharyngeal teeth present over there the teeth are generally hollow cones of dentine containing the pulp cavities absence of teeth in case of cyprinoids which have got pharyngeal teeth instead of normal teeth are adapted for crushing and grinding prey uh, so the pharyngeal arches near the gills they are basically in other words called gill records they are adapted for crushing and grinding the prey pharyngeal teeth are located above and below the pharyngeal arches just one second okay you have the buccal cavity pharynx and gill records so this is the gill arch gill filaments gaseal exchange but here you can see the pharyngeal teeth or the gill records present inside the mouth this is the pharynx pharynx you have the gills and then you have the pharyngeal teeth or the gill records this is the buccal cavity jaw teeth oral cavity or buccal cavity here you will find the gill records present 
gills a number of perforations of gill slits are located on each side of the pharyngeal wall primary function of the gill rakers is to protect gill filament from injury and to primary function of perforations of gill slits are look uh, are uh, located on each side of the pharyngeal wall the primary function of the gill rakers is to protect gill filaments from injury and to assist the fishes in the process of injection ingestion now omnivorous fishes these fishes like uh, puti mach putia sarana the they to, who take of uh, all of uh, flesh as well as the uh, 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 herbs so they are uh, they take uh, they are carnivorous as well as uh, herbivorous both of them they take both of them uh, their their gill rakers are short and stumpy so these are uh, short and stumpy gill rakers are found over there these are the gill filaments gill arch mota mota and in herbivorous fishes the gill rakers form a broad sieve like structures across the gills so it's for filtering the water in order to retain the food in the bucco pharynx so you can see 15 to 16 a line 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 kan kor upore ei je upor dike ei line 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 gill filaments dekhche tar upore ei dekho danter moton boshe royeche this is 15 to 16 gill rakers are present over here like rabio rohita sirina mrigala gill rakers form a broad sieve like structures across the gill slits for filtering the water in order to retain the food in the bucco pharynx আচ্ছা আমার কলা শোনা যাচ্ছে হ্যাঁ স্যার নর্মালি লং হার্ড অ্যান্ড টিথ তো এইটা হচ্ছে গিল ফিলামেন্টস তার উপরে তুমি এই দেখো গিল রেকার্স গুলোকে ইউ ক্যান সি দ্য গিল রেকার্স দে আর লং hard teeth and forming like rasping organs like in valago attu boal mach ha eh? you have the esophagus the pharynx opens be, uh, behind into the esophagus which have large number of mucus secreting cells which are scattered in the mucosa তাহলে ফ্যারিংস টা ওপেন কি করছে ইট ওপেন ইন দা ইসোফ্যাগাস এন্ড দে হ্যাভ লার্জ নাম্বার অফ মিউকাস সিক্রিটিং সেলস উইচ আর স্ক্যাটার্ড ইন দা মিউকোসা টেস্ট বার্ডস আর অলসো প্রেজেন্ট এক্সাম্পল মানে ল্যাবিও রোহিতা ওর রোহু ওর সাইপ্রিনাস কার্পিও মৃগাল সাইপ্রিনাস কার্পো সিলভার কার্প এন্ড কাতলা 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 মাছ দে হ্যাভ গট ইভেন টেস্ট বার্ডস দে ক্যান টেস্ট ফুড অলসো Uh, in say from the in the esophagus the esophagus is short and narrow in the case of herbivorous and omnivorous fishes like in labio rohita putia sarana cyprinus carpio etc and in case of car carnivores it is large and distensible tube in uh, in carnivores and predatory fishes like volaga uh, atu or heteropneustis fossilis like shingi now the stomach the stomach acquires different shapes according to the availability of space in the body cavities of different fishes the stomach has got an anterior cardiac stomach and a posterior pyloric stomach like i showed the anti uh, anterior stomach is the cardiac stomach and posterior stomach is the pyloric stomach all the fishes do not possess a true stomach as is it is mostly absent in various 
herbivorous fishes like Labiorohita and Katla Katla. In such fishes, the anterior part of the intestine is swollen to form a sac like structure called intestinal bulb. So, an intestinal bulb is present in uh, herbivorous fishes. And a true stomach is present in carnivorous and predatory fishes like Chana striatus, Mr. C, etc. But that's the reason because uh, they need uh, the high proteins. They're taking in high proteins. The stomach basically uh, denatures uh, the proteins so that uh, trypsin and pepsin can work in the acidic environment of the stomach. So they need a very good stomach. So in carnivorous fishes, the stomach is generally sac-like and thick-walled. Uh, uh, thick so it is sac-like and mota, thick-walled. Stomach of omnivorous fishes is also sac-like uh, in Putia or Cypnus scarpio. In some fishes like Hilsa and Gudusia, stomach is reduced in size but greatly thickened to become gizzard-like. Yeah, gizzard, like birds gizzard, or your grainy substance gulo ke guriye guriye nahi. That's what gizzards do. So, uh, in the digestive anatomy of the stomach, in herbivorous fishes, no stomach. The pylorus is a sphincter that prevents premature movement of the food bolus out of the stomach. Pechundi ke na jaye. Uh, around the pylorus, many fish have outpocketing called pyloric sica. You had seen a pyloric sica before. So, if you compare the stomach among different fishes in trout, which is a carnivorous uh, mouth, esophagus, beautiful stomach, and the intestine and hindgut comes out. In catfish, which is omnivorous, the stomach is there, and but the intestine has got much more coiling. In carp, which is also an omnivore. The stomach is almost absent. It's present in the pharynx. And uh, uh, it is very much coiled. And milkfish, which is only a plant, the so stomach is almost not there. It directly enters into a coiled intestine. So this picture uh, actually gives an idea of the type of stomach. Then let us have a look at what this pyloric cica is. It is the anterior part of the intestine and it gives rise to a number of finger-like outgrowths called pyloric or intestinal cica. The anterior part of the number of finger-like uh, pyloric cica, you can see this is the pyloric cica. This is how the pyloric cica looks like. It serves as accessory food reservoirs. They store some foods. Food. When there is no food, they keep on providing the food. Histologically, the intestinal cica resembles the intestine and probably serves to enhance the absorptive area. You can take a absorption, it improves that area. Now let us go on to the intestine. This is the part of the alimentary canal that follows the stomach and is divided into the anterior part, small intestine and posterior part, large intestine, like ours. The small intestine is just behind the stomach, receives ducts from the liver and pancreas and is called as duodenum, while the rest part is called ileum. There is no clear-cut demarcation between the small intestine and the large intestine, unlike what we have. The large intestine becomes thicker, bigger. The length of the intestine depends upon the feeding habit of fish. In carnivorous, small intestine. In herbivorous, omnivorous, a larger intestine. So, in carnivorous fishes, if the intestine is shortened, short intestine, but you have got a bigger stomach present. Because flesh can be digested more readily than the plant based food stuff in the intestine. Herbivorous fishes, intestine often elongated and arranged in many folds. At the lomba, you, have, you find an intestine over there. Longer intestines are of great advantage to the herbivorous fishes as they retain food for a long period of time to ensure digestion. 
omnivorous fishes intermediate length is found rohu basically is the herbivorous the intestinal bulb of rohu is about 25 cm the small intestine is about 8 uh, meter tar mane 25 cm hocche intestinal bulb jeta ke roughly stomach er moton bola hocche and this is intestine is 8 meter and the large intestine is about a meter in length Achha, then you have the rectum it is not usually distinguishable externally but an iliorecta valve is present in few fishes of fishes to demarcate it from the intestine so in uh, rectum you find an iliorectal uh, valve it is present in few fishes of uh, few uh, fish uh, species of fish to demarcate it from the intestine tetradon Histologically, the mucosal fold of the rectum differ from the intestine in being shorter and broader. They possess a large number of mucus secreting cells. They produce copious mucus to lubricate waste food and aid in easy defecation. Apart from the, uh, the structures, you have the digestive uh, glands. So the two main digestive glands are the pancreas and the liver. The pancreas is present as a diffuse gland but is well developed around the blood vessels between the lobes of the liver. When liver is a pancreas, pancreas is a pancreas. Pancreas is a yellow structure. Yes, sir. And this is the fish liver. So pancreas has two digestive functions, source of exocrine secretion into the onic pancreatic enzyme such as digestion help for it and endocrine secretion of hormones like insulin and glucagon. In the case of liver, the liver is a bilobed gland, usually yellowish in color and the liver in fish produces bile which is stored in the gallbladder. It is the key storage of food energy in the form of glycogen. Even this is the same case with human beings also. So digestive enzymes uh, released that pepsin, trypsin, chymotrypsin, elastase, carboxypeptidase, aminopeptidase, pancreatic alpha amylase, colipase, pancreatic lipase, cholesterol ester, hydrolase, ribonuclease, deoxyribonucleases. So all these are released from the pancreas. Now let us uh, look at the feeding adaptation uh, in uh, fishes. So various structures have been modified according to the nature of food and feeding habits of the fish. Where what are they? The position and the shape of the mouth varies. The dentition, dant gulo vary kore. The lips can become cornified as in the case of labio, granular or palpitated. The taste buds and mucus secreting cells thakte pare, nao thakte pare. The structure of pharynx and gill records have also undergone modification according to the feeding habit of the fish. And you can you have seen according to the feeding habit of the fish, the relative length of the gut intestine can be long or small. So to conclude, the structure of the alimentary canal varies in different uh, species of fish and is generally adapted in relation to the food and feeding habit. This should be one takeaway message in your mind. Carnivorous fish, bigger stomach, shorter intestine. Herbivorous fish, shorter stomach, larger intestine. Because herbivorous feeding habit is not vegetarian, carnivorous fish is non-veg. So this must be a takeaway message. And the variations are seen in the position of the mouth, architecture of the buccopharynx, relative length of the gut, presence or absence of the stomach and pyloric cica. So uh, the stomach and uh, uh, mouth ta upore hote pare, much terminal hote pare, niche dike hote pare. Uh, so all these things, this should be the takeaway message. And thank you for bearing with me in this morning. Our any questions? Do people have questions? Sir, we have seen that in herbivorous species, the intestines are much longer than carnivorous species. So, Haan. is it for digestion of cellulose purpose? Protein is very easily, protein is easily absorbed up. 
সেলুলোজ ফেলুলোজ থেকেও বেশি আদার ফুড মেটেরিয়াল উইচ টেক ইউ নিড এ লংগার টাইম সেলুলোজ এর জন্য ইউ হ্যাভ গট আ ডিফারেন্ট টাইপ অফ অ্যাকচুয়ালি ডাইজেশন ফর সেলুলোজ ইউ ক্যান সি রুমিনেন্ট অ্যানিমেলস লাইক কাউস অ্যান্ড গোটস ইউ ক্যান ফাইন্ড দেম সো what happens is that uh, cellulose ferments and then it the bacteria breaks it down so in herbivorous fishes actually uh, high protein materials are not taken in so you have lots of other things coming in and so uh, intestine needs to be long in order to because they are, they take more time to break down and digest so you need a longer space for the food materials to be absorbed not for cellulose okay sir thank you sir আমি ফ্রাইডে তে তোমাদের একটা ইয়ে দেখ মানডে তে তোমাদের আজকের মধ্যে পাঠিয়ে দেব কয়েকটা তোমরা নিজেরা চুজ করে আমাকে মানডের মধ্যে বলো না কেউ একটা ফ্রাইডে তে ছোট করে টক দাও দশ মিনিটের একজন দাও যে কোনো কে দেবে কেউ একজন তুমি দাও একটা যে কোনো টপিক নিয়ে যে কোনো হ্যাঁ তাহলে টেন মিনিটস ফিফটিন মিনিটস করতে পারো একজন দুজন করে করবো তো তার বেশি তুমি এইবারে একজন দিয়ে শুরু করি অরিত্রি তুমি করো যখন ওকে বলেছ ঠিক আছে যে কোনো তোমার পছন্দ মতন টপিক জাস্ট বোর্ডে একটু টিচিং করতে হবে ওকে ঠিক আছে আমি আবার হ্যাঁ বলো